Anyway, I've uh, only recently dipped my toes into the never-ending well that is internet feminism as I see it. I've been circling the drain for a very long time on mainly staying on the outskirts until I felt like it was time to jump in. Let me take a page out of our dear friend Onision's book and give you the definition of feminism. I'm sure you've heard it ad nauseum, but that's actually kind of perfect because my mom's nickname for Greg is ad nauseum. Feminism is defined as the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men. Mmm. I feel like we've heard that a hundred thousand motherfucking times. I mean, I get it. Feminists want to be equal to men. Why shouldn't we strive for that as a society? I can pretty much do anything that a man does, any kind of job that he has, whether it be a coder or engineer or a pastry chef, I can do pretty much anything that a man does. Every opportunity is presented there for me, I can go to any kind of school I would like to go, but I just choose not to. Nobody in the world needs my ass in the engineering field, I would fuck up everything. I'd, uh, buildings, I, I would just demolish them. Engineering pays a shitload of money, it's mostly dominated by men. But you know what? You know what else pays a shitload of money? HR jobs, which are dominated by women. Because we have the caring and the feeling kind of aspects of, of ourselves as ladies, and that's a good job for us. Can be. I've never really seen this male-dominated fields versus female-dominated fields. I've never really seen that as a problem like so many women on the internet do. I think there are inherent gender roles in place that create things like the wage gap because what the wage gap statistic that people quote is it takes up all the male jobs and all the female jobs and weighs them against one another. And you know what? Because women, you know, aren't really working as much as men normally or they don't take higher paying jobs or they're stay at home moms, things that aren't really problems. Um, yeah, there's going to be a disparity there and that's where you get the 70 cents to the dollar kind of statistic that is quoted ad nauseum. <laughs> it only exists on this huge margin because again, women just don't take these kinds of jobs, but they are a they are there for us to take if we so choose. But I'm sure a lot of women don't agree with me on this. They kind of see this disparity as this evil patriarchal force trying to keep women down and not letting them thrive as, as productive members of society because dicks. Then again, there are plenty of women that are CEOs or they are uh, well-respected doctors and they do break these so-called barriers. So. Who's actually really, you know, holding you back from doing what you want to do? Men and the patriarchy or yourself? Now this isn't going to be about third wave feminism solely as I see it. I'm going to talk about a certain aspect from this yawning chasm of terror that has spawned what happens when you pander with a pretty face. Male feminism. This male feminist kind of concept that's Surprisingly panned by many feminist critics, the argument is that it could be seen as more harmful than helpful to what feminism and true feminists are trying to promote, and it actually goes against this equality that these third wave feminists are touting. Instead, male feminists represent something that I think I can define as male flagellation, or even worse, self-flagellation. Male feminists, I see, tend to put men and themselves as underneath women, which is totally not what equality is, y'all. In doing a lot of really stupid research for this video, I came across a, uh, an article, a two-year-old article written by a gentleman from, who's also a graduate from Northwestern University. Um, it is called, what did I call it? So you want to be a male feminist? Here's 10 simple rules to follow. Oh my god, I'm gonna read these out loud for you cold. So let's stick around and see what these goddamn rules are. Understand that women are leading the way and affirm their capable leadership. Don't assert yourself at the forefront. What? Uh, equality that you want, but, but remember that women are in the lead? If you're equal, you don't really have a leader, am I right? When it comes to issues that directly pertain to women's bodies and experiences, be quiet and listen. <laughs> what? Come on now. Like, yeah, listen to what they have to say, but like, shush, 
like silencing them is, is stupid. Like, yeah, let let women talk. Let let your fellow human talk. That's a very respectful and nice thing to do. However, I don't I'm not gonna tell you to shut up and listen to me. That's just as rude. <laughs> Hi, my name's Gina. Would you please listen to me? That's much nicer. Men don't get to determine if they are allies to the feminist movement. Women do. <laughs> <laughs> Women have the final say in everything. Really pushing that equality there, sir. Fucking a, a, a guy wrote this. Oh my god. Ow, I'm a man. I'm sorry, I'm a man. That bullshit, which I saw the amazing atheist do one time, which is fucking perfect. Use your male privilege to encourage other men to work towards gender equality under women's leadership. <laughs> oh! Don't use the label of feminist as a way to try to get women to like you. That's disingenuous and counterproductive. I fucking agree with that one. When given opportunities to execute professional tasks related to feminist issues, consider referring other women instead. Men are not qualified to talk about women's issues is basically what I'm, what I'm getting from this because they're not women. They can't even discuss it. They can't even discuss it. They have to just not talk about it. But, but fight for everything a woman brings to the table everything, no matter how ludicrous, no matter how one-sided, fight for it. And finally, when women criticize your involvement in feminism, don't talk over them or talk down to them. Actually listen and be accountable. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, this is something that I need to uh, address with a lot of people from a lot of different factions of these movements online. Basically, these rules are saying, shut up, women come first. Men aren't allowed to do something because women have it much harder. So men who do follow this mindset, not only are they self-flagellating, they're also kind of reinforcing that women are victims and need to be protected. No, we fucking don't. I have never in my life felt like a victim just because vagina. I mean, I take responsibility for my bullshit when I really, really mess up. It's not always easy, but neither is life, so tough cookies. But what I don't need is a man, like a male feminist, to mansplain to me why I'm so goddamn oppressed. And there's a certain actor bro who I think encompasses this male feminism that I don't like and the, uh, the kind of SJW mindset that I think can be potentially harmful. One guy represents it all, Matt Mogori. He's an actor widely known for playing Officer Bennett on Orange is the New Black, and apparently he was on How to Get Away with Murder. I don't watch that show. But I never really liked his character on Orange is the New Black. I like the show, but not his character. And when I found out what he's all about, it made me dislike him even more. And he is the perfect catalyst for me to drive my point home here. Check out this BuzzFeed article featuring Mr. Maddie, totally and utterly lauding him for his efforts to help out women or black people or the trans community. Man, this guy does it all. And he is for fucking everyone. And you know what? I admire passion like that. I admire people who want to help out their fellow human being. That's a good and noble quality to have. However, I think people like Matt may <clears throat> squeeze a bit too hard when they hug you because I think it's mostly about how he feels at the end of the day and uh, how it's kind of covering up how he really has nothing brilliant to add to these conversations. He just exists within this sphere. Let's look at Matt making a point about his compassion for the Black Lives Matter movement. They use this picture. He's getting felt up by a black man. That screams compassion to me. Not pandering at all. Seeing two attractive men touch each other is not gonna ignite any sort of feelings in women at all. That never. No. <laughs> well, remember Matt's free the nipple response? Kind of sexualizing himself here? People loved this shit. And what I notice about BuzzFeed articles like this is that they highlight reasons why Matt is, quote, woke as fuck. But the examples they choose are not from his own mouth. They are retweets of things that people have already thought before him. Judging from his Twitter, it looks like he doesn't really know what to say about these big issues. He just likes what other people have to say. I mean, on the 4th of July, he posted someone else's thoughts about how he feels about the 4th of July. Like, that's weird. And as you can see from his own thoughts, they are kind of surface level, not really deep bullshits and uh, using the word duty heads in a sentence. Men like Maddie 
proudly display their male feminist badge for all to see. He shows himself off while hawking other people's words, and in my opinion, that means you're not really thinking for yourself. People like Maddie will try to branch out and kind of grasp on to any hot button issue right now and, and wants to help in some way, but doesn't really have the voice to help. Recently he tweeted this, paired with a gif of the hashtag Black Lives Matter. Maddie said, If you say all lives matter, I want to clockwork orange your eyes open in front of you until you get it. Now, I get that he was just trying to be colorful, but you know what happens to Alexander DeLarge in, in the book and the movie, correct? You know why he's called a clock... You know what a clockwork orange is. It's an orange with nothing inside. You're just the peel. You've got no filler. <laughs> Here, everything is taken away. No, you can't make your own choices about things. Alex sees something he used to like to do, like violence or sex, and he gets sick. He gets physically ill. His free will is taken away. He can no longer choose. He's not a man. He is a clockwork orange. That's what you want to do to people who believe all lives matter, Maddie. You want to just take their free will away so they will acquiesce to whatever the fuck comes out of your fucking face. <laughs> what the hell? Alexander DeLarge can no longer do what he likes to do. And what I like to do, Maddie, is not mindlessly go along with these hashtag movements that I see significant problems in. I don't blindly follow them. I like to deconstruct things, it's what I do. Men like Maddie also do another disturbing dance online. They will put down their own gender to favor women. He has to tell you just how much, on a daily basis, he acknowledges his privilege as a white male. <sighs> He's just desperate to let you know that. Some men take it to disturbing extremes where they just think all males need to be wiped the fuck out. Is that not weird to anybody else? Is that, is that strange? <laughs> That's pretty strange, yeah. I've never ever in my life said, you know what, all women are terrible and they should just be killed. What, what? that would never even enter my mind. <laughs> Male feminists like to talk about men discounting women's feelings, but like they're happily discounting their own feelings or other men's feelings. Like they'll use things like white man as almost an insult as put on display here. You're fucking a white male! You're a white man! No, I'm a white guy's Yes! I have done my research. This alarms me because there are women who act similarly. They are very happy with drinking their cups full of male tears, and they think that killing all white men and all men in general is a really fantastic idea. <laughs> Mass genocide, let's fucking... They've got all this smarmy, passive-aggressive bullshit just to highlight you know, the, the beacon that they put on themselves that they just can't stand people that own wieners. And yet, I see this same stinking rhetoric coming out of the mouths of dick owners. What the hell is that about, guys? It turns into sort of self-hatred on a wretched display where it gets to the point where Daily Mail writes an article like this one. It's about a self-proclaimed male feminist online who gets bullied for it. It's a pretty cringeworthy article. I mean, the kid said that he learned feminism from Emma Watson's Twitter feed. Oh dear, oh dear, dear, dear. To male feminists like Matt's credit, I will never denounce their passion for social justice. I think these are very important conversations that we need to have, but I think their passion is quite misdirected. There's a lot of blocking because you disagree with me, and there's a lot of unintentional, no, I'm the most oppressed person in the room coming from this guy. There's a lot of contradictions I see with male feminists, and I think at the heart of it, it comes down to respect. They want to so badly show people how much they respect women, but that comes at the expense of their own self-respect. Anyone who is willing to denounce their entire gender or their entire orientation simply because it exists, in my opinion, has very little self-respect. And I think respect is the major thread that needs to be woven into all of these big issues that are happening in the world right now. We're not really respecting one another as humans these days, as I see it. We're we're quicker to like shut someone down or clockwork orange them until they acquiesce to one way of thinking. And that's not freedom, that's not living, that's just disappointing. But I see no reason why we can't rise above it. 
I do believe ideologies like the concept of male feminism are slowly fading away because I believe people are waking up to the fact that they, these kinds of people are just kind of repeating the same talking points over and over again. There's really nothing new coming out of this movement. It's just the same shit over and over again. Maddie exemplifies this theory a lot, I think. And if you want a celebrity who will speak good points about feminism, I suggest you check out Terry Crews. I fucking love that guy. He makes very poignant points about masculinity and self-respect. Matt McGorry can offer you a shirtless photo here and there. That's what, that's what he can do. And sometimes, ladies and, and gentlemen out there, sometimes all we want is a shirtless photo. <laughs> Just to see the shirtless photo and uh, move along with our day. You know what though, that does get a bit boring and a bit monotonous after a while and you want to start searching for a guy that'll stimulate other parts of your body. Like your mind. I mean, check it out. This writer on The Guardian says she will not date self-proclaimed male feminists anymore. Could it be because some guys are using the label just to get into your pants? Some of them, probably. If you stand for something, just stand for it. Don't be shouting from the rooftops, I'm a male feminist, everyone! It's boring, it's obnoxious, and it's very self-centered. Knock it off. Anyway, this is what I'm doing now. I'm recording myself in a really, really hot fucking room. So once I get more on a schedule, I can be doing these things more. And I would love to hear any suggestions from you guys, any comments that you have, anything you want to tell me that, that you didn't think I touched on or I didn't touch on enough, or things that were just, you're like, fuck you, Giants, why would you say that? I want to hear everything. So please, you know, share this video, like this video, comment on this video, delete this video. I don't know what you can do, but these are... These are things I'd like to keep doing going forward, so, you know, let me know what you think, and uh, we will continue chugging along and breaking up this crazy world, or just mapping out this world as, as well as we can with a camera and a really hot room. Okay, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Take care, bitches. She's hanging out again. She may leave, but for now she's hanging. She's hanging! She's hanging with the cool kids. <laughs> Look at this face, it's so freaking cute. <laughs>